All right. Well, this is the the catch up catch up class. Um, the e-learning class on, that we were supposed to do last Saturday um, because of a thunderstorm and lost internet. So we're going to do the catch up class today. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about this idea of base hitch and and honestly how you can um, make a lot of money with small consistent wins. And it really is the small trades that help you maintain that consistency. And <clears throat> so we're going to talk about this concept here. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask as we go along here. Um, slides are, uh, there's not very many slides, but <clears throat> just a few things that I wanted to cover and, and bring to your attention. You know, we as traders, we all love... <clears throat> that home run you know that's what we trade so many people are trading for and and, and, and who doesn't love a home run you know um, <clears throat> the problem is home run hitters aren't very consistent as a matter of fact you don't win games with home run hitters you win games with consistent base hitters and those home runs just don't happen all that often in the market. But one of the things we do as traders is we often are always trying to swing for that really big trade. We want to get rich and we want to get rich right now, really fast. And we oftentimes um, make terrible mistakes based on greed rather than um, working for some consistency in our trading and you know the home run trades are are everywhere we see them um, we're inundated really with them in the media when was the last time you ever saw someone on CNBC that said well you know I I was always swinging for the big win and I went broke um, you don't see those um, they only talk about those those guys that um, I remember one um, years ago, some young kid took his bar mitzvah money and um, turned it into a million dollars trading. <clears throat> and that was um, <laughs> an, an amazing time in the market. And, and the other thing that is he was willing to risk 100% of his money all in. He didn't have any bills to pay for. He was still living at home. You know, there was, he was all in every time he went into a trade. And that's just not most people, right? So we hear about those and then we get this idea that it's this, you know, the market can be a get rich quick thing. We go to trading websites and we see these trading websites where they, they like to promote um, all of their winning trades, but they never really like to promote their losing trades. As a matter of fact, traders themselves are that way. When you sit around with your buddies and you talk about trading, do you talk about your losing trades? No. Nobody ever does. You get the impression from your friends or anybody that you come in contact with that they almost never lose. But that's not the truth. The market's not made that way. It can't be that way because only half of the people can only be can be winners at any one time. Of all the money in the market, only half can be winners at any one time. We get it in social media. Social media, I think, has done more damage in the trading industry than about anything else because they promote this whole idea about gambling around uh, trading that it's become a giant online casino where you get um, these folks out there just oh they're just the greatest traders in the world and they do this and they do that and um, most of it's absolute baloney and people get this false impression of trading um, we see it in emails all the time one of the things that i hate about the option industry and i love trading options and you guys know that but one of the things i hate about option trading is that 
they've turned um, option trading into this big gambling thing out there where we're always throwing caution to the wind or we're chasing around earnings like we can predict what an earnings report is going to be. Um, we do all of these wild and crazy things um, in that and we see that in the emails. The emails just inundate our inboxes. If you've been in trading very long, you, you get them too. I apologize for the beeping that's anyone anyone that's listening to this on YouTube because I actually have my charting system running and those are trade alerts going off <laughs> in the background. So I apologize for that. But we get inundated with that information and we get this laundry list of how, oh, these 100, 150% winners and they just give you this laundry list. Never once mentioning that 60, 70% of those trades were probably losers because when you swing for the fence, you're not going to have a very high win-loss ratio. Okay. And we just don't see those stories out there very often. In fact, it's even rare. Um, you do see it from time to time on social media where someone will fess up and, um, will fess up and say, hey, I just busted my account. I've lost everything. There was a guy, um, somebody posted here in the room a um, couple of months ago that broke his account because he was betting big and he was determined he was right. And here's the sad thing. He said that this was the third time that he broke his account. Okay. And he was a big big poster all over social media man he had this thing wired okay and it's not that it's not to crush that person or talk down about that person we've all had those problems in our trading where we we get that big ego about trading that we've got this handled and that's usually when the market humbles us right market has a way of humbling us it has a way of knocking off all of those rough edges that we have as traders, all of those pride issues and things like that, it has a good way of humbling us. Um, Earl, yeah, typical email, 100% loser, winners, no losers, yeah. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, right? We know that's not how the market works. Well, what about consistency? And you guys know that I, I talk a lot about this um, and probably give it a little more ten attention than, than people like, but I really find this to be very, very important. And it's important for me. When I really started to turn my trading around, um, I gave up, I knocked those chips off of my shoulder. It wasn't about the hero trades. I learned that if I wanted to bank, make money consistently, I had to trade to make money consistently. And that meant I had to do, I had to change the way I went about things. You know, our, my bills, and I'm sure yours do, yours come just as regularly as mine do, those bills come consistently. And if I'm gonna be a full-time trader, if I'm going to make a lifestyle out of trading, and I think most folks that come to trading have that kind of goal in mind or that idea that they would really love to be able to make a full-time living trading, then the only way we can do that is start working for consistency, okay? because we can't count on that home run trade to happen all the time. Just like today, we have the market is just kind of choppy. It's, it's um, really insipid price action. It's just, there's just no, the market's got no mojo today. So you see a great trade signal, but it just doesn't follow through. There's, there's not much going on there. And so those home run trades cannot be counted on all the time. It's easier to get consistency when you start shooting for those base hits, when you start working for some really small achievable trades and continuing to, to work on them. You know, Mike Peterson, I don't know if he's here today, but Mike Peterson um, 
will commonly post in here, hey guys, it's way easier to find five trades that make a hundred bucks than it is to make one, find one that pays you 500. And I just scaled it up. It's easier to find 10 100 winners than it is to find that one trade that's gonna make you $1,000. And here's the, here's the thing, guys. When you've been struggling with your trading and your win-loss ratio is pretty low, answer me this question. How many right here in the room are going to be a trader that actually holds a trade until there's $1,000 in profit in it? See, if we're honest with ourselves, we want the home run trade, but we don't have the confidence or the will to hold a winning trade that long. We get too nervous, right? And we take that profit. And what ends up happening here, while we're trying to swing for that home run trade, we end up taking our profits too quickly and we let our losers get away from us, right? Because we want the big win. I can't lose this much money. I, I need, I need this will come back, right? We're praying it's going to come back. Come on, it's got to come back and we hold those losers too long. So what we need to do is we need to work for a little bit more consistency. And base hits will do that for you in your trading. Um, you know, I've used this analogy, you know, many times. I will ask people, will you trade for 50 bucks? Will you trade for 100 bucks? And people would say, and commonly say, well, this is no way I'm going to take a, no way I'm going to trade for $100. But I asked this question, if you were walking down the sidewalk and there's a $100 bill laying on the sidewalk, are you telling me you're going to step over it and just walk on by? But we do that almost every day in our trading. How many of you in here have walked past $100 bills in your trading because you wanted more? You walked right past them. You didn't take them. Not only that, did you not only not take them, but by the time you closed the trade, you took a loss on the position. Can you guys imagine what your trading account would look like? <laughs> yeah, other than today, Malcolm. Yeah, other than today. What would your account look like had you just taken those profits when you had them? What would your win-loss ratio look like had you taken those profits? How much different would your overall account be had you just taken those profits? Right? You know, you get three or four of us together we're walking down the street and a hundred dollar bill blows across in front of us. There's probably going to be a few of us with a, with a concussion because we're all going to dive at it at the same time, right? We're all going to bang heads diving at it at the same time. But isn't it amazing with our desire to pick up that hundred dollar bill off the street, we won't do it in the market. We won't take that trade off because we want more. We let that greed get in the way of our success. Now, there's some ways that we can fix that problem, but it requires quite a little bit of discipline. It requires just a little bit of planning um, to do it. You know, there's an old saying out there, um, Creighton um, Abrams said this, um, how do you need an elephant? Well, you know, the simple answer is you just eat it one bite at a time, right? That's how you go about eating an elephant. Now, when we want to grow our accounts, we want to turn our accounts in those elephants, right? We want that great big giant account, that behemoth of an account. But we never think about the steps to get to that big account, that if we just take one small bite at a time and work for consistency in that, we can grow our trading account 
with a much more certain path. Does that make sense, guys? We're always out there trying to bite off more than we can chew rather than just taking that small, set, steady trade, eating that elephant one bite at a time. Okay? So we often just let success go past us while we're trying to get the big win. We're trying to make the trophy win and be the superstar in trading. But the real successful traders tend to just work for those base hits. They're quietly back there just grinding out little trade after little trade after little trade, banking money, and building their account. Now, I know there's quite a few folks listening right now that have small accounts. And this is really, really important, not just for the big account or those folks that have quite a bit of capital to start with. It's really important for those with a small account. And a real quick story. Um, the, you guys in the room have heard this before, but I had a had a customer come to me um, that hired me for individual coaching, and they had received twenty five thousand um, dollars when um, one of their parents had passed away. Um, and they took that money and they decided to start trading and they put that money in the uh, in the market. Well, this person got a hold of me when their trading account had dropped uh, from twenty five thousand down to eighty seven hundred, eighty seven hundred dollars. And they wanted to learn how to how to trade they didn't want they had the money they didn't want to add any money into it which was a good thing because a lot of folks will just add money back in and then pretend it didn't ever happen okay that they didn't lose anything see i'm i'm right where i was it, it's, it's no problem they convinced themselves of that but what this person did was was buckled down here and we built a plan we built a plan where they were going after small, steady gains, okay? And as a matter of fact, we were shooting for $50 profits. $50 gains. Every time a $50 gain came into that um, trade, it was a requirement to take it, okay? And over a period of time, the confidence came up because it's way easier to find a stock that's just gonna make you 50 bucks, right? Way easier to find that little $50 trade and just keep doing it over and over and over again. And you build confidence and you build the discipline in the consistency of taking profits, okay? Well, long story short, in, in nine months, this person traded their account from $8,700 back up to $25,000. Taking small $50 trades, we moved it up to $100 profits after uh, they grew their account a little bit more. But the fact is it was the small consistent wins that moved the account back and regained that trader's um, confidence in their ability. And, and here's the thing that I think a lot of people miss in that small consistent trade. Particularly if you're an option trader, this works really, really well. If you're a stock trader, it requires a little bit more money. But uh, imagine if you, can, if you can get consistent at making 50 and $100 wins, okay? Obviously 50 and $100 wins are probably gonna be one one contract trades, right? You just all you need is to trade one contract to make 50 to 100 bucks. Okay. Well, once you build confidence in this and your account grows enough, how hard is it to go to graduate to two contracts and double your money? And then three contracts and then four and then five, right? I did that today. 
in that simple little trade on OKTA in a two day hold took $1,250 profit. That was a really tiny base hit money wise on the upside. Okay, I, I have just graduated to that point that I could trade a large enough position. I made 1250 bucks just like that. Okay, so just that little bit of effort, once you build the confidence in this, then you just scale up. Okay, you just scale up. Goodson, you're still gonna have to set your reasonable stops and that's why we have to search for good quality tight entries. Okay, good quality entries. And you're gonna have to manage those stops very carefully. We can't have, you know, that massive stop out that um, is gonna cost us a bunch of money. You know, for example, one of the things we tend to do is we think as traders that we have to be chasing every stock in the market, right? We don't. We can find just a few simple low cost stocks and trade the price action and make all the money that we need to make. So for example, just in Coca-Cola last year, just trading really cheap three and four dollar options, I made 25 grand last year. Just trading one stock, Coke. Now, we can do that with lots of different things. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, okay? It doesn't have to be anything terribly expensive, okay? We just have to trade with the market direction and be willing to take those profits. The problem is most people, you see a $50 profit, what are you gonna think? Well. It's 50 bucks. I, I, how many of you have negotiated with a trade? You've even had a goal and said, hey, this is my goal, and then didn't take the profit because you want more. We've all done that as well, right? It's easy to say, take the profit. It's hard to do. Because we've all sat there and tried to negotiate with the market that, hey, I want more. How many of you have ever put on a trade, wake up the next morning, the market's gapping up, you look at that, that trade, and it's up a bunch. It's up a bunch. How many of you have ever looked at a trade and you're up 300, 400, 500 dollars, all just all of a sudden, market gapped up, stock moved up for you, everything is perfect. And then you go ahead about your business, you look at some other charts, you're chasing around different other things. And then you go back and look at that stock and now it's up $300. It was 350, it was up $300. And you think, well, it'll come back. I want that 350, right? And then you sit there and stare at it and it just keeps getting worse. And now it's 250. It's hard to take profits. It's hard to take profits unless you get the discipline to do it. Ouch, Roan Ron, Ron is saying he's had a $1,000 trade and took it to um, a minus 300 trade. Yeah, um, it's, it's easy to do, isn't it, Roan? It's easy to try to negotiate that and say, you know, you, hey, I just had this money. It was just right here in my hands, right? I, it was just right there. And... It just slips through your fingers. Okay. And that comes down to the discipline of doing it. Now, the only way that I know a person can establish discipline is to actually set themselves into a trading plan. You guys know I'm a huge believer in trading plans. If we don't have a plan if we're just winging it, 
will never get the opportunity to reach simple goals. Okay. The person that I worked with, the rule was, hey, I don't care. It doesn't matter how far the stock goes from here. When you see $50, take it. You have to take it. That was the rule. They stuck with that discipline. Okay. So what is your number? What's your number that would change your trading account? And the thing is, so much of the time, people don't even know. They come to the market with the idea, hey, I just want to make money. Well, guys, that's a fantasy. Unless you have a plan to do that, that's a fantasy. How many times do you suppose people have walked into the bank and say, hey, I have this idea. And the banker says, well, how are you going to make money? How are you going to pay me back? Well, I just, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. They're going to say, go get a plan, figure out how it's going to work, and then come back and talk to me. Right? But for some reason, we think we can approach the market and just wing it all the time and be successful. And that's just not the way business works. Okay. So we have to think about what our actual goals are. And you guys know this, that I work to, I actually have a sheet on my trading desk that I fill out every Sunday night. Every Sunday night when I'm preparing for my week, I fill out this trade sheet. And the trade sheet lists my annual, my monthly, and my weekly goal. I keep that right in front of me all the time. Because what I have learned to do is trade for my goal, not trade for a home run. Okay? I'm not here working, trying to be right. I'm here to make money. No, I know that sounds funny to a lot of people. Well, you can't make money unless you're right. But how many times have you been right, guys, in your trade, but just didn't take the money? Right? You get into that trade and it moves in your direction. It's up nice, but you didn't take the money. Okay, we can do technical analysis. Yeah, too many times, right? We can do technical analysis. We can write great scans. We can do all kinds of fun, fancy things to try and put us in the driver's seat and give us an edge. But if we don't get comfortable with taking profits consistently, we're not going to be consistently profitable traders. Okay. Now, one thing that that always gets people is, well, what about the home run trade? Can you can you get that home run trade? Well, home run trades happen in the process of working for base hits. Okay? You can have that great base hitter that suddenly just connects with one perfect. Boom and it's out of the park, okay? But it's part of the process, part of the process, okay? Where we just take one step at a time. We're not swinging for the fence, they just happen, okay? You get into that nice trade, stock takes off like crazy or gaps against you and moves, okay? So in those kind of um, those kind of time frames, the the home runs do happen, but if we're only out there trying to swing for the home runs, we're probably going to end up with a terrible win loss ratio. Okay, that puts us in a situation that we could really break our accounts pretty quickly. So I'm going to ask you guys, what is your number? What would work for you? What's going to turn your trading around and make you be a better trader? Find more consistency. 
What's going to make you feel really good about your trading? Well, let's take a look at this. If we just had three, three base hits per week, take a look at these numbers. And notice I put the, the, that cash machine over there because if you think about base hits in, in trading, the market can really kind of be your cash machine. Okay, because we're not looking for every trade. We're looking for that really simple, clean trade. We're just, we just want a few little trades that have a potential to make us money. Now, the way I calculated this is I only calculated 48 weeks because you guys might calculate this out and say, well, if there's 52 weeks, there's going to be more money here. But... To be realistic, there's not 52 good weeks of trading in the market. We have holidays and things like that in there. So I just calculated 42, or excuse me, 48 weeks. Okay. If you make three $50 winning trades, how many in here that first line would just be huge for your trading account? Three $50 winning trades per week. Put $7,200 in your account. How many would that double your account? Yeah, there's going to be some folks out there that are starting out. It's going to double it, right? Or come close, yeah. Just three $50 winners. Now, in the process of finding those three $50 winners, do you think you're going to, particularly in the market the way it is right now with it being so gappy, do you think there's a possibility you get into that trade and boom, one trade is going to make you the 150? That's possible, right? We have those quite often, right? Bang. We've got that winning trade. Okay. So you're going to want to be thinking about those simple, simple trades and thinking about those consecutive profits, just pulling that profit off. Let me ask you guys this. Um, For the little bit of work that we have to do to make a $50 winning trade, you know, find us, find the stock, make the position, you know, punch a few buttons, bang, 50 bucks. In your current, in your current or past work place, did you ever make 50 bucks in less than an hour? Less than an hour actual work effort. Okay. There's a lot here, a lot of folks here that would look at that and say, well, no. Most people don't make 50 bucks an hour. And it takes us a whole lot less than an hour to put together a trade and take the trade off. It could be down to minutes of actual work that required us to make that money. Okay, but we rarely think about that. We rarely equate that to what, if we had to go get a job today, what it would cost or how much time it would take us to make that $50. Okay, but look at as you go down through the numbers, and notice that I just kind of scaled up. You go from 50 to 100, okay? 50 to 100 is going from one contract to two. 100 to 150 might be going from two contracts to three. And look at what you can do in your trading. Now, obviously, this isn't accounting for any losses. This is assuming you're a 100% winner. We're not 100% winners, okay? So you also have to fact, factor in the idea that some trades are going to be bad. But the, the, the important thing that I wanted 
to uh, point out here is that if we just work for consistency, right? If we're looking for three good quality trades every week, is that going to be really hard to find, guys? How many of you are racing around looking at stocks nonstop all day long, chasing, 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 and never taking the time to look and say, wow, that, that could easily make me that $50 profit. Never settling down enough to actually put yourself in the driver's seat. Anybody guilty of that? And one of the reasons we're guilty of that is because we've not actually put together a plan. Right? We've not developed the discipline to stay consistent in our trading. Okay? Now, I know when you look at something like this and say you have a $10,000 account or something like that, and you say, making $7,200 this year, man, I really wanted to do better than that. And I get that. And you can do better than that. Okay? But at the same time, when I tell people that, I want to ask them the question, have you ever done that well before, ever? See, we all want to do better. But if we haven't had that kind of consistency, if we haven't had that kind of success yet, what makes you think that tomorrow morning you're going to turn over a new leaf and suddenly it's just going to be all different? You know, this time, this time it'll be different. No, it won't be. Unless you put that plan together. What's, what you're going to find, guys, is once you put that plan together and you start working for that consistency, you're going to commonly beat that number. And the reason is, is because you're working for consistency and those good home run trades will happen once in a while and things will start smoothing out. Your confidence will come up in your trading and you'll commonly beat that. But you're never going to get on that right path if you don't start. Does that make sense, guys? We have to start. We have to put ourselves in a place of beginning and start working methodically forward. It's the only way we develop that discipline and that consistency in our trading. All right, so when you're looking at something like this, and I want everyone to kind of go through, it would be a great exercise for you to go through and just figure out some of this stuff. Maybe your number isn't 50, maybe you want to shoot for 75. I've got a customer that I'm working with in private coaching, his number is $450 a month. That's what he's after, $450 a month. You want to know the cool thing, guys? After we put this person on a plan, He's made that goal happen and actually went way above his goal five out of seven months. Earned way above his goal five out of seven months. but it's because of the discipline of working for consistency that that can happen. Okay, we have to start working for that consistency, putting that plan together, making, making it okay. You know, it's funny because I'll, I'll talk with some folks and people will just give me, um, They'll, they'll, they almost become indignant 
I'm not wasting my time for $100. Right. That $100 bill blows across in front of you and on the sidewalk. You're going to reach down and pick it up. Don't, don't lie to me. How many $100 bills are you just going to let blow across the sidewalk before you decide to say, okay, I think I'll stop and pick some up. right don't be that person that can get that will get so indignant say well i'm not doing to do all this work for a hundred dollars no you're not going to do it all for a hundred dollars you're going to do it for a hundred dollars a time if you can find five or six trades a week that make you a hundred dollars awesome that would be a great market then right just keep doing it Keep building that discipline, stacking up those little wins. Okay. You know, John L., John is one of the most disciplined traders um, I've seen in a long time. Um, and John, John's working for small consecutive wins. Small consecutive wins. I think last month, John, you reported um, you had a 97% win, win ratio. You had taken 13 trades, 12 were winners. Okay. I can't remember what the average was. The average win was... $75, something like that. But your winnings over the course of the month totaled $1,000. $78.69 per average winning trade, $1,022 for the month. Now here's the probably the most impressive thing. That I mean that in alone is really impressive, guys, right? 92% win rate, 13 trades, 12 winners, $78.69. Trading a small account but made 1022 bucks. That's right. John's looking at the market as the ATM. But here's the really impressive thing. John, how many months in a row have you made your goals? Well, it would probably be easier to ask, when was the last time you missed your goals? See, the thing is, John is so consistent with what he does, he's making his goals month over month over month over month. And John just posted, haven't missed a goal yet this year. So think about in this nutty, whippy, yucky market that we're trading right now, John's making his goals. Working for that simple consistency in his trading. All right. Is this making some sense to you guys? That we all are subject to greed that we all try to swing. We all want more money, right? We all are trying to swing for the big win. But if we put discipline into the equation and start working for more consistency, we can use the market as an ATM machine. Okay. We can use the market as an ATM machine. Now, there's going to be folks out there that are going to say, <clears throat> I'm not going to work that hard for $1,000 a month. Okay. Then pack it up. 
But here's what John's going to do. John's going to keep building his account. And pretty soon he's going to start doubling up on those wins. Because with that kind of consistency, all he has to do is scale up, right? He doesn't have to do anything else. He doesn't have to learn a new strategy. He doesn't have to do anything fancy. He's just got to add some more contracts to the trade. He doesn't have to do anything, anything else. All of his technical analysis, everything stays the same. He just scales it up. Okay. I don't want to hear those folks that just want to whine. They want to negotiate with the market. They want to say, well, I'm never, you know, hey, I can make $1,000 doing anything. I don't, I don't need to work for 1000 bucks. All right, keep losing money. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep losing money. Guys like John will just continue to, to bring it in. Okay, and that sounds really mean, but it's the truth, guys. Knock that chip off your shoulder. Get some consistency first. Then start growing an account where you can reach out for the bigger dollars. Okay, and that's all we have to do. Don't be that person, okay? Don't be that person that says, well, I'm not going to do this because I want more money. Well, all right, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to keep getting what you're getting. John's going to be a successful trader because he has the discipline and the drive to stay focused to his plan and to his rules. If you have a disciplined person working for little trades, I would rather have someone sitting right beside me at my trading desk saying, you know what, if I can just make 25 bucks a trade, 25 bucks a trade, 25 bucks a trade, and they have consistency in doing that, I'm hiring that person. They're going to work for my trading firm. Okay, that's what I want to see. There's the opportunity. Punch a few buttons on the cash machine. Extract your money. Get out of the way. All right. Uh, Lauren, if that question, you know, I see you directed that question to John. Um, folks that might be watching this video can't can't see that question, but I want to. The question from Lauren was, how long did it take you to get to um, where you had a system and I'm uh, in consistency? And I'm going to tell you, for me, for me, it took years. Okay, I did everything in the book. I made every mistake in the book. I had the big chip on my shoulder. I ran around like I was the greatest trader in the world. Boy, you couldn't tell me anything about technical analysis. I knew it all. I'd studied it all. I could write the code for just about anything, write any scan. <clears throat> the fact of the matter was, guys, my account wasn't growing. It's when I gave up all of that baloney, knocked that chip off, and started working for consistency that my trading life changed. It's how I built my account. Literally, guys, I built my account initially with just a whole bunch of real tiny credit spreads. Working for consistency started growing my account and I just kept working hard on that consistency 
still to this day, my win-loss ratio, you guys know, averages in the 70% range because I work hard on consistency. I make far less trades than a lot of folks do, but I make more money because I just keep stacking up consistent wins. I don't have to have big wins, okay? The trade today, guys, that I took off $1,250 was a whole 200 shares. That's a monster trade. Now, for some folks, that would have been a really tough trade to take because the stock was pretty expensive. It's $164.50. So, hey, that's an expensive trade, right? That was just a simple stock trade. And the reason it was a stock trade, just for people listening on YouTube, is because the options were terrible. Okay. But would it matter? Let me ask you guys this. Would it matter if you bought 25 shares and I had 200 shares? Your percentage gain is the same as mine. I made 1250 bucks. You'd have made... 120, something like that. Think about that. It's all a matter of scaling. That's right. Build consistency and then work to scale it up. Okay. I did a lot of practice trading. The problem with for me, Jojo, is I started um, my trading. I was 25 or 26, something like that. Now, just a little bit older. And that's not right. I think I was 27. <clears throat> and back then, online trading was in its infancy. Okay, it was it, it was twenty five dollars to make a trade. Well, actually, I think the first brokerage it was like thirty dollars to enter and thirty dollars to exit, and they didn't have much for online trading. So what I for practice or that kind of thing. So what I used to do is I would actually write it out in in a notebook. Where okay, I'm taking this trade here, and I tried to hold the discipline. Okay, this is how many trades you how many shares you bought, and I didn't do any option trading at that point. And I actually worked out that, hey, as I add in, if you'd have saw my old office back in the day, you'd have thought a psycho lives there. Because I had binders full of statistics. I had, um, there wasn't a space on my walls that wasn't covered with some chart, some chart setup, some write up on the chart. Uh, about how this pattern worked or that pattern worked. I look like an, a, a psycho. Okay, so my practice was different than what you guys get to do now. Practice nowadays is very, very simple, opening up a, pay, a paper trade account and, and doing that. But here's the thing. I find people you know, going into a paper trade account and they give it a lot of lip service that they're gonna practice, but they don't. They'll take one or two trades an entire month in a paper trade account. Yep, I, I practiced. No, you didn't. You guys know the success that Mike Peterson has had, okay? member of the room, started trading options for the first time a couple years ago. He practiced for a year. And when you go over and sit down with Mike, he almost always has his live platform open and he has a paper trade platform open. And in his paper trade platform, there's 12, 14, 15 plus trades. He's trading it. He's practicing, and still today, he practices. He looks for the stats. He looks for the win-loss.
He even signed up for another service at one point in time to send him weekly trades. He tracked that and went, okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> He never traded one live because he worked on the strategy and found out that it wasn't workable. Okay? He's methodical that way. We all have to get there. So I always recommend you cannot do too much practice. Once you start building that track record of success and saying, hey, this is working, then start going live and working for your consistency in your live trading, but don't stop practicing. You may want to learn a new strategy. That's what Mike does. Mike started out and he just trades directional long calls and directional long puts. He doesn't do anything else and he doesn't have to. He never has to if he doesn't want to. But now what he's working on is, is working in his paper trade account. Well, if I, since he's grown his account, now if I take two or three trades, he's practicing the idea of scaling out of the trade. Get into the trade, take some of the profit, let some of it run, see how it works. He's practicing. Learning a new strategy. That's right, Jojo, learning, learning to do verticals, debit spreads, credit spreads, learning, practice them. Okay, so that you can scale up. So, yes, practice, 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 practice. Remember guys, when we go into the market, we're competing with some of the best and brightest people in the business. Okay. They get these, these MIT sharp people right out of college and bring them right into Goldman Sachs and they train them in Goldman Sachs on their system, their rules, their plans, and they set them out there to trade. These are sharp people. These are sharp people that can calculate multiple calculations in their head in a split second. Really sharp people. All right, we're competing with them every day. We can't come to the market unprepared. You know, a lot of times you'll hear me describe that when you go to the market, when we go to the market, it's a, we're going to battle, right? We're stepping onto the battlefield with some of the strongest, best warriors out there. Are you going to step out onto the battlefield in your underwear? Or are you going to step out onto the battlefield in um, your full gear for protection that you're prepared that you're ready that you're dressed you're you're prepared you're practiced you know what you're doing right don't step out onto this battlefield unprepared all right so guys that's the last of these slides and I'm not I don't want to belabor this point too terrible much but what I want you guys to do to start thinking about what you can do to improve your trading with just those little base hits it doesn't have to be that that trade that you just swing for the fence all the time you take those little trades knock the money out and then move on. Learn to scale them up once you build that consistency. And I'll tell you guys, you're, a lot of you are starting in a place that I wish I could have started. I was um, 27. I had my own construction business. I had no money. <laughs> every, every dollar that I had went into building the business okay i lived in a 975 square foot house 
That's no joke, guys. It was 975 square feet. Me, my wife, and two kids. Okay, I open up an account with 2,500 bucks. That was the minimum that I could put into account at that point in time that they would allow me to open an account. But here's one of the things that I always did, guys. Is even though it took me a while to, 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 to put $2,500 into, into account, I never stopped saving to that account. I still ha I haven't stopped today. I'm 57 now. I put money into my trading account all the time. I'm continuing to grow my account. Okay, I'm always saving to my account. In my IRAs, I never miss fully funding them. Never. I will go without a lot of the things that I want. I will quit buying pizzas. I will quit doing whatever I need to do to make that happen. Okay, so it's how bad do you want it? Okay. Yeah, I would give up my blizzards, Linda, if I needed to, to make that happen. Absolutely. You guys know I live well below my means now. I mean, well below my means. I, I literally don't owe anybody any money. Not a penny. I have never had a credit card bill that I've ever paid interest on. I have never paid interest on a credit card bill. I live below my means because that's the way I want to live. Not that anyone has to do that or that that's the right thing, but that's the, what I do. And what, I, what I've always done is worked to always have money to, to set aside money to grow an account okay now as i was growing my account i continuously i would work for the consistency in my trading i would grow that account based on a you know percentage basis i was continuing to see it move up but i was always adding to it okay So how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to grow that account? I, I hear a lot of people that um, over time, well, I've only got $5,000 and they feel bad about that. Don't feel bad about that. You got $5,000. Now what are you going to do to grow that account? What, do you, what should you do? Do you need to go find another job? Besides your trading, what do you need to do to grow that account? And then start building in that consistency. It's, it's amazing what will happen to you guys if you just start seeing that first little move up in your account. Um, my son um, remarkably listens to his old man. Um, <laughs> and particularly on that kind of thing because um, how it's changed our life. He makes really good money with what he does and he started from day one saving 20%, 20% of his income he saves. He's 25 years old. He's got a brokerage account that's over
His retirement is fully funded. Okay. So how bad do you want it? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to do to um, help yourself along that path? It is difficult trading a $5,000 account. It, it can be done, okay? It can absolutely be done. Rick, Rick has been, you know, Rick Sadler, Hit and Run Candlesticks, has been showing you guys how to do that. Open an account for $5,100. What is he, 18 months, not quite two years. And he's built that account trading options starting with $5,100 to 80 grand. You can do it, but it requires discipline. It requires focus to make it happen. Okay. So don't be ashamed of where you start. In fact, be proud of where you start because you're starting. So many people never, ever start. But just because you're in that place where, hey, I've got 5,000 or 10,000 or whatever it is, doesn't mean that you have to stop there. Keep working forward on that. Okay, keep working forward, drive forward. There's how bad do you want it? Last thing I'm going to close here with is you might think that this whole idea of base hits is kind of silly or initially you thought it was silly, but I'm telling you guys that I have built a lifestyle and I have built a retirement account and I have built comfort into my life that most people dream about. But I will stand here today and tell you that I did that without ever really worrying about hitting the home run. You guys know I have some home run trades and long-term positions. But it all starts out with that short-term base hit continuously working in the market. Okay. It's pretty simple stuff, guys. Don't make it too hard. Work for consistency. Grow that account. You know, I started doing this whole thing and working out and um, getting myself healthy again because I really ha let that go. I have a really bad back. And, and I let that convince me that I was done. My back was so bad that uh, from all of the building and construction that I did that I let that control my thinking and, and I got way out of shape and all kinds of things and I used that as an excuse. But I've changed that and I just took little tiny bits at a time working to improve. Now I'm at a weight that I haven't seen since college. At 57, I'm stronger than I've been in 25 years. All because I started small and worked up. And you know what's funny is, is I was talking to my wife just the other day, and she says, What are you what are you planning to do with this? You're just you're just getting you know, stronger and stronger. And I said, well, I don't know. I'll find out. I'll find out when I hit 70 or 75 where this is going to go. I'm really thinking that way. Just an hour a day for that many years, what could you do? The same thing with your trading, guys. Just that little bit of improvement every single week, every single month makes a big difference down the road. Take the time to do it. It's worth doing. There's no greater feeling than getting up and knowing that every day is an opportunity that you could make money. But you know what? Not every day is a day that I have to make money.
and that I can get up, like I said today, put on a old t-shirt, walk into my office, and I'm at work, and I took money out of the market today. How lucky can we be to just work for that consistency and take money out of the market? Anybody can do this. If I can, trust me, anybody can. All right. Everyone, thanks for listening to this. I appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I will get this rendered and um, put up um, on YouTube if you want to catch it again or if you want to share it with anyone. Um, um, and I appreciate that uh, tremendous, tremendously. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I do appreciate it. Get started today. Don't don't stop. Don't don't let this class go by and not do something with it. If this meant something to you, and it's okay if it didn't mean something to you, if you just say that yeah, Campbell guy is is as flaky as I'll get out, that's all right, fine. But if this meant something to you, don't pass up this opportunity. Don't don't let this go two weeks or three weeks or a month before you get started. Start now. Start now. All right, everyone take care. Have a great day. We'll talk to y'all soon.